okay so i'm finally making this video right uh it's a long time coming yeah before i start this gist all right um my name is nifon too yeah welcome to my channel on the channel i make some tutorials i post new videos every wednesdays and saturdays so please make sure to check back here um on those days if you're interested in contents like this okay so uh you guys have seen the thumbnail already you've seen the title this is the gist this is the story of how my wedding day went okay but before the wedding i had a different plan for this video all right so i had a plan uh my plan was i was going to take guys to the market you know show you guys the laces i picked out why i picked out the laces you know all that good stuff and then when i got to the market you know when you sew laces laces are very interesting it's, i i love sewing laces because they are very interesting to sew um so but you know you never really you, you hear that laces are expensive but it never dawns on you how expensive laces are until you are the one that's paying for them okay so i put up to i put up to let me let me get this okay so i put up to i put up to the um market like this you know and we entered the fabric so i'm like hi guys so you're welcome um, blah 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 <laughs> you're welcome to the market we're getting fabric waiting 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 so um uh, sir please how much how much that list there and the man said thirty thousand mm -mm, sorry um this this list here how much is it thirty thousand for a yard sir uh, so how much is this other one fifteen thousand for uh? a yard fifteen thousand k jesus christ all right you're welcome to another video so let's begin the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draft the bodies and then out of that we'll shape it um we'll, we'll then need to shape it to um any way we want um uh, you've seen the measurements already so i'm going to come to the top here i'm going to come to the top here and i'm going to draw a line this line i just wrote is um representing where my shoulder will sit and then I'll use that as a guide to mark the remaining um, vertical lines. The first one I'm going to place is my underboss length. My underboss length is 15. I'm going to come down by only one inch. So usually I'll come down by two inches, but in this case, I'll come down by one inch. Now for most onions, you want to come down two inches from the um, underboss length. But for this person, I'm going to use only one inch after the underboss length. Okay. But if you're making it for a person, for um, depends on what the person wants, right? But usually it's just low. Now you've seen I've marked a line. So this is my um, underboss round, underboss length. This is where I want to place the cut. And this is my boss measurement. I counted four inches from the underboss length to get that point. Okay, so now I place my boss. My boss is 39. 39 divided by 4 is 9.75. I'm going to make a mark right here. 9.75. I'm going to come down straight down to where we have the one inch and I'm going to place the underboss round at that line there. Here, the underboss length is 33. 33 divided by 4 is 8.25. So that's 8.25 I've marked there. And I'm going to connect both of them. All right. You can see now we have a line connecting both of them together. So here I'm going to place my shoulder measurements. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to make a mark right there at 15. 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. So that's 7.5 I've marked there. And I'm going to come down by 1 inch. You can see what I've done. And then I'm going to roll a line from the front of my um, paper to um, the 7.5. That's the 1 inch slope of the 7.5. Okay. I marked um, 7 inches. I came down by 1 inch, made the slope to the 1 inch. Okay. So now I'm going to place the armhole. My armhole is... Um, is um eight inches how do you get the armhole the boss divided by six plus 1.5 okay so 39 divided by six plus 1.5 gave me the armhole okay so i wrote a line from that shoulder point from here to here and i made a line out now i'm going to draw my curve now please when you're making the armhole curve make sure you come to the middle of your armhole and come in by half an inch from here to here is eight the middle there is four and then we're going to make a curve. The curve going to come from the shoulder. It will hit that center line before it comes down. So you can see that right there. Okay, first of all, I have to apologize. There are two dresses in this video. The other one, the monostrap, the uh, monostrap dress, 
the that has the gold um the gold bottom part i did not film that because marriages are crazy yeah it didn't go <laughs> i couldn't show you guys um how i made that dress so this is actually for the second dress that you see later on and this is my bride <laughs> basic bodies we're going to need to carve out uh bustia and the sweetheart and every other part that we're going to need all right so to do that we're going to decide how deep we want the bustia to be now bear in mind that once you come below six inches you are showing some cleavage okay so the cleavage is going to come from down here so you see this here at the bottom here you can mark half an inch if you are a bit daring because when you mark half an inch there you are going to have one inch okay so you see that if you mark half an inch they're going to end up being one inch because you know everything will be on the fold but i don't want it to be half inch i want it to be um i don't want it to be one inch i want it to be half inch so i'm marking 0.25 you see this place here this is 0.25 here okay i'm going to come up here so at this point here i want it to show more if you are daring you can mark one inch you can mark one inch there but for me i'm going to reduce it a bit to 0 0.75 okay all right the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a line connecting all the points so i'm connecting the 0 0.25 to the 0 0.75 you see that this will not expose too much you've seen the um you've seen the dress already now i'm going to place my boss point to boss points my nipple to nipple is eight so 8 divided by 2, 4 plus half an inch. That's what I used to mark those two points I just marked right now. So this is where the nipple is. And you can see that where our line will not reveal too much. Now know that the more you reveal, the closer you go to that circle, the, the more you, you would um, reveal. So yeah, make sure that you draw your boss point to boss point line so that you'll be guided on how deep you can make that so that you don't go and expose too much flesh. Now that we're out of here, at this point here i'm going to come to eight inches once you come once you go below six you are, you are showing some cleavage now my shoulder is almost an off shoulder but it is not so what, what you do if you want same things you come here you place 1.5 okay at the top part there 1.5 you see that by the time we saw half inch and half inch you will have only half an um, half an inch left for your shoulder by the time the neckline takes half an inch and the shoulder takes half an inch so you've seen what i've done now look at that that's the neckline so now i'm going to draw the shape for the neck i that i that i want because you know there's that's be a net in that part now so i need to draw the neckline that's for the net okay so i'm going to come from the shoulder here i'm going to come to seven inches and i'm going to make a mark there that's where the net to start from and then i'm going to simply make a curve so you see that that's the that's the the shape that the top of the neck of the of the net part will take don't forget to add half inch at your shoulder. Now it's time for us to make the princess that on this part. Okay, we figured out how we want this part to sit. So now it's time for the princess that. Now, if you've not seen my video on how to draft a princess that, please make sure you can see that. It's going to explain that in more um, detail. So I'm going to measure around the armhole. Okay, down to there. That's 11. I'm going to come to the middle of that um, armhole at 5.5. 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. Okay, so you see from this line, I'm going to come up by half an inch. This is going to create a lift under the bus. And then I'm going to come in by two inches. Please make sure you see the video on how to draft the princess that so that you would fully understand what's going on. I'm trying to be fast here. From here, you see that? All right. 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go by half an inch and I'm going to come down by one inch okay then I'm going to draw a line from here to here I'm going to connect line from my boss point to that one inch you see that now when you've done that make sure to measure the length of that that and make sure that you check that you have only one inch there okay please when you're stitching it make sure you drag it a little you know you not like you drag it but just balance it out not don't allow it to don't allow the machine to gather it when you are sewing so the two inches i took at that part there i need to pay it back okay you see this after i place the two inch i'm going to draw a straight line you see this i'm going to draw a straight line straight up if if, if she was very very curvy the line will still be slanted but since it's not so curvy i have to make sure the line is straight okay and now i'm going to i'm going to need to add my real allowance the first two inches i've added pieces for the for that two inches that i took at the under boss length okay so these two inches i just added now is my actual allowance all right when i'm done with that i'm going to cut it out please make sure to watch the video on how to draft the princess that that's going to explain this in um more detail all right so after i cut the front that part here will be that part you, that in my hand will be used to cut the front the net part sorry the mesh this is the part i'm going to use to cut the mesh as for this part i'm going to cut here okay cut up here cut so you can see what i'm doing here all right now i'm going to come okay around the bust like so and i'll as for the back, I'm going to draft a regular body. The only difference is that there'll be two inches in front of it. Okay. So, so far, this is what we have. These are the patterns we're using. The side, center, and this is the part for the mesh. Okay, so the day came. Okay, you guys already know that you know, it is me. You know, <laughs> you know? So I had um, a friend of mine who makes, um, who uh, sews also uh, made my made my shirt for me. Um, so you can see this lovely white shirt, and I had um, and I tied my damask um, silk wrapper. You know, and nice um, nice um, shoes. I had on nice shoes. Of course, it's my wedding day. Um, so now, if you guys notice something uh, in our tradition, okay. And when I say our, our tradition, I'm talking about Aqua Cross, okay, because I'm from Crossover State, and our outfits are inspired a lot by our colonial masters, the British. <laughs> The, um, the shirt I'm wearing, it has a long tail behind. It's trying to mimic um, the tail shirts that um, the English used to wear back in the day. Okay, and you know, and you see that thing on my neck, that um, that fabric, piece of fabric that I tied all the way down. You know, it's supposed to mimic the tie. Okay, that you know comes with the shirt. You know? Okay, my wife's on Nyonyo, um looks like um, it's supposed to look like the Victorian dresses that the ladies used to wear back then, where you know you have the up here fitted okay you have up here fitted and then from here it's going um it's flayed all the way down you know there's a there's a cage you're supposed to wear under but you know black ladies you guys don't need to wear cages because you know you come with you know hefty hips and bum bum and all sorts of things so there's no need for a cage because the cage comes factory fitted you know so um yeah that is worth uh, that is where the ethic most aqua cross traditions pick their um, mimic got their outfit from. I don't believe that this is what we were wearing pre colonial times, but anyway, that is what we wear. So, all right, so now what I've done so far, I've marked the two inches in front of here and have the half inch at the top. Now I'm going to draft a very a similar, a body very, very similar to the one we've drafted already. You can see bust line on that bust line the way I want the cut to be. I'm placing the bust measurement, then I'm going to place the under bust round at that cut area join them together place my shoulder and then do the slope my armhole is still eight inches for the depth how do you find your armhole your body divided by six plus 1.5 now but the only difference at the armhole is that i'm not going to go in by half an inch okay i'm not going to go in you know the way i did um i went in by half an inch in the middle in the front i'm not going to do that at the back for my allowance now you see where i'm taking my measurements from I'm taking it from the two inches not from the edge of the paper what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark my dust points I'm going to come to four the same um thing i did for the boss point i'm going to come from the shoulder to seven inches draw a line from there to the top 
open it up by half an inch on both sides. Sorry, my um, ink started to fill me, running out of ink. All right, so we have so many lines. All right, so that's the part for the dots. I'm not going to cut it out. I'm just showing you guys what the dots will do at the end of the day. But because of that dot that I'm going to hold there, I'm going to add three inches at the bottom and two inches at the top. So you see, at the bottom there, three inches at the top, two inches. That extra one inch at the bottom of the bodies would pay for whatever allowance that um, the dot is going to need. Here I'm coming up by one inch. This is going to eliminate any any puffiness that my zip is supposed to have at the back. All right. Now the next thing is to is to cut it out oh sorry please we're going to need to mark the neckline at the back okay so the back i want the back to come very deep at nine inches but remember at the shoulder we still need it to be 1.5 so that the front will match the back and then i'm going to now make a curve okay so from up here i'm going to make a curve from there all the way down and then i'm going to swap out okay Half inch allowance at that point is that the back is a lot simpler than the front. Now I'm going to simply chop it off. So cutting the bottom, cut up the sides, through the armhole, the neckline, and the shoulder, and we're done. It's time for us to start transferring uh, um, patterns onto the fabric. All right. All right. So you can see what I'm using here is bridal satin. Okay. So in case you are wondering what I'm using to line, I'm using bridal satin. Now you see this um, part, that part there is for the net, so I'm going to take it off. Okay. So you can see, I'm going to iron everything, trying to arrange it, trying to um, maximize, economize my fabric, please. You see? So you see that this pattern I have here, I'm going to need to add half inch in front so that by the time I join my center piece to it, that's my mesh piece to it, it's going to land at this pattern I have exactly. I hope you understand. So you see what I'm just watch what I'm going to do. Okay, so I drop my scissors, drop um my paper with padlock on top of it, and then watch this. I'm going to cut here the same. Here I'm going to cut here too, exactly the same. Up here exactly the same. The shoulder part like the same. But in front here, I'm going to add half an inch of excess because I'm going to need to add my net in front of it. Okay, because of that that net, I need to add the half inch allowance. That front here, this part here is going to pay for joining my um my net as for the back you see the pattern here is exactly the same the back does not really change the pattern is exactly the same all right so you see that you see now as for that shoulder part there i'm going to need to trim it just from three inches to the shoulder i'm going to need to trim it to become exactly the same because we need it to be exactly the same with the shoulder at the back you see that because i cut the, the back pattern exactly the same I'm going to need to trim from the top part there. You see three inches to the top. I'm just going to need to trim that part there to be exactly the same with the back so that the front will match the back. If I leave it half inch bigger, the front is going to be half inch bigger than the back. You see the side pattern here. I'm going to cut it exactly the same. This pattern does not change. There's nothing that will be added. Nothing will be taken away from it. So the way it is, I'm going to um, place my fabric on the fold, place that on top, and I'm going to cut. So as for the net or mesh, whatever you are comfortable calling it, what you're going to do is you're going to fold the net twice okay only one level will be too light and then we're going to need to hem it and all of that so we're going to need to double it so here i'm going to arrange everything so you see me i'm arranging the fabric trying to make sure that it's flat and then i'm going to double it you see that by doubling it by the time i cut i'm going to cut two pieces with only one um by the time i cut one i'm going to cut two because i've put it on on um, two folds so you see that I put the pattern on top of it like so. Please watch closely. And then I'm going to cut. So at the bottom here, I'm going to cut it exactly the same. Around this side, you see the side here, I'm going to cut it with half an inch of excess. Okay, and at the top also, I'm going to cut it with half an inch at the top because I'm going to need that for sewing allowance. And then at the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to need to pad what I'm doing. Now, please go and make sure you watch my video, how to pad a princess that that's going to explain this in detail. I, I took 30 minutes to just explain the padding. Okay, so I cannot, um, I don't think it's the best uh, idea to film this again. What I'm using, the difference is that I'm using um, cotton este. This is not nylon este, this is cotton este. It gives better results, you know, slightly better result, but you know, uh, all those little little things matter to me. So I'm using cotton estate. 
not using regular SA. I'm going to use um so you can see I've got four levels of my SA. I'm going to place this one, two, three, okay. Okay, let me confirm. Okay, that's three. And I'm going to place one on top again. That's four. So you see that this is the first of all the SA. That's after I had, I had already ironed the cutting SA all over the body of the pattern, as you as you can see, before I started placing these four patterns on top. Okay. So uh, altogether, there are like five levels of SD. First of all, one level covering the whole body, and then we have four levels on top. So you see this, drenching it in water, ironing it. Now I'm placing my wadding on top of it. So you see that. So it's basically the same thing with what I did in the video, how to part the princess that. Now this is how, you know, wadding takes a long time to iron. So I like to soak it in water and then use, use um, paper to iron it so that the SA does not stick to my iron. All right. So you see this, the centerpiece, I'm going to basically do the same thing. I've covered it, first of all, with um, cotton estate all over. So now I'm going to cover from the armhole part on, until um, one five inches away from the end. I'm going to cover from this notch here, from the notch for the princess that all the way to 1.5 will be covered with four levels of estate and one level of, um, of wording. So you can see that this is the side. You see this side here? This is the one that I ironed first. This is the part I just, I just um, told you guys about. And this is the back. The back the back is just covered with the cotton SD one level. I'm not padding anything at the back. Now, in case I've not mentioned earlier on, I made this um I made this entire outfit the night before as the green one, the one that is on the thumbnail. I made this the night before the wedding, a few hours before the wedding, because I'm a tailor, I'm a Nigerian tailor, and if I deliver the clock on time, I will lose half my skill, right? You just have to get your clothes leaked. Okay, we work better under pressure, all right? Now, the reason why she had two dresses was because the first one was the dress that, you know, she's supposed to wear before she gets married to me, and the second one is the one that she wears after we are married, all right? So that's the, that's how that goes. As for my lining, I'm using cotton lining, and on the lining, I'm going to iron soft gum stay. So you see this soft gum stay. Okay. So now, um, this is my stay. I'm going to get my cotton lining. Okay. So you see this. Iron into the soft gum stay. I'm going to simply place this on top. Please make sure you iron the gum stay onto the cotton lining before you cut because when you iron, cotton lining shrinks, the stay will shrink. So you don't want to cut the pattern, iron, and then the pattern shrinks. Make sure you iron the um, cotton lining onto the soft gum stay before you cut so that any shrinking that would happen would happen before you cut your pattern out. Okay? So as you can see, I've taken my time. I've ironed it. I've ironed everything. Look at everything is now um, one piece with the um, soft gum stay. The cotton lining and the soft gum stay are, just, are now one piece. I've ironed it together at that point. Now for all the panels I have padded, I'm going to cut them exactly the same. So you see this for the back, the center of the front, the side of the front that's on top right now, I'm going to cut it exactly the same. Please make sure you watch my video on how to part the princess that there. I'll take my time and break it down. Um, there I took my time and I broke everything down properly. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this exact same step. All the sides that are on the table right now that I've shown you guys, the back, um, the front, the back and all the sides of the front, cut the pattern with, on the cotton lining exactly the same. All right. Now, like I said, look at the back here. The back has, look at the fabric. That's the soft gum stay and the cotton lining. Same thing for this side. You can tell that's the lining. And then on this part here, okay, you see that the next step is to cut my lace. What you can see here is the lace. All right. You've seen the patterns that we use to cut the lining. We're going to use, so you see this pattern here, the same way I cut the lining is the same way I'm going to cut the fabric. I'm going to use my, the, the patterns and cut the, the lace. Okay. So the lace and the satin will be exactly the same size. All right, I'm going to do it for all the parts I have the um, the side of the front, the center of the front, the back. Okay, just put the lace on the fold and cut the patterns exactly the way we cut the lining. So you've seen what I've done here. This is the lace piece for the back, and on that we have the fabric. So now the part that I marked on my on my um, when I was drafting the part for the dart, I'm going to go and hold the dart from seven inches all the way that I'm going to do the same thing to the lining. All right. It come from the shoulder from here all the way down okay so 
yeah you can see that from the seven inches i've dated the half inches all the way down i've done the same thing to my cotton lining all right now next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to join them together from the top all the way okay from here i'm going to join half inch down here half inch here and then i'm going to stitch down half an inch okay so half an inch around here and then half an inch down okay so i'm going to do that make sure you join the lining to the fabric when you are stitching around the neck so you can see this is the back pattern look at where i dotted i've joined them together everything has been ironed please do not forget to iron a lot all right so this is the part this is the center part i'm going to join the front to the side so you see the side this is the lace for it so i'm going to join them together and then i'm going to do the same thing to the lining okay so you see this part here i'm going to join the lining together as well okay so here to here all the way up please make sure you see my video how to part the princess that the same thing will be done to this side as well so now i've joined the two pieces together now let me just um you're going to come to after immediately after the, the wording you're going to make a notch right to where you have the thread please make sure that you try your best not to break the thread okay so i'm going to lay it flat and then we're going to need to iron this part here flat. I did I did this exact thing, this exact um step in the video how to part the princess. That please I recommend that you see that video. It's going to explain this in detail. So I'm going to press that part down, take a piece of S tape, place on top, and iron it. I'm going to repeat the same thing for the top part. So you see this part here that I'm opening up like this. The same thing I did. I'm going to use a breast ball and iron it flat. Now you can see this is what I have done. I've ironed it flat and I've used my cotton uh S tape to hold it down so if i said what in estate so now you see the net i'm going to need to join this net together remember we cut two pieces so you're going to need to join it together you're going to sew only the top together okay so that it hemmed itself okay so i'm going to come from here stitch all the way out so you see this there's half inch around the top i'm going to now make small notches please be careful when you are um, working with mesh because it's very very delicate it's going to rip at, <laughs> at the slightest provocation okay so make sure you turn everything to the correct parts so you see that I'm, I'm i've reversed it to the good part now and then i'm going to iron this completely flat please make sure you drench this this your mesh in water okay make sure you regulate your iron put the iron on on the on the setting used for silk and still drench the fat the pattern in water look out see the amount of water if you have a steam iron turn off the steam I, if you have a steam iron turn off the steam function go and fetch water in the cup and come and look at this is steam iron i'm not using it listen to what i'm saying your nets will burn please drench the pattern in water turn off the steam function put your setting on silk if you can low if you have an iron that is crazy lower than silk and then simply press it flat so you can see i'm going to take my time and i'm going to iron it completely flat okay when it comes to um okay you see this part i'll I will, I will give you that tip but see what i'm doing here i'm going to join these two parts here together half an inch so you see this i'm going to flip this one over like this and i'm going to join here all the way up half an inch you see this around here i'm going to join here at half an inch watch this so you see, I've joined the part here at half an inch. I've joined the mesh to the fabric at half an inch at that point. And then I'm going to take the corresponding lining, place it on top, and then I'm going to stitch them together at half an inch. When it comes to lace, make sure that you use a lot of water when you're ironing. It's better that the lace is wet when you're done than the lace is burnt. Now you can see I have joined the lining the same way. Okay, you see that? I've joined the lining to the fabric. So I'm going to simply repeat the same thing to the other side. Where's the other side? Where's the other side? Where is this? Okay, look at it right there. I'm going to do the same thing to this part now. Okay, so you can see that. Look at this. You see the way the mesh looks nice? Nice and easy. <laughs> All right. So that's nice, that's easy. And then I'm going to join the shoulder. All right, so I was supposed to film the entire dress, but there's a whole lot of, whole lot of madness that happened this night. This was a night to my wedding. I was trying to make this an, a few hours to my wedding, you know, as, as a tailor, it's in my, it's in my blood to, it's in my blood to delay. <laughs> All right. Uh, now I know that this video, you know, doesn't cover the entirety of um, of the dress you can send the thumbnail. But my channel, I've done a lot of videos like this, 
um, you know, watch the video on how to party princess that watch a video on um, watch a video on how to draft the princess that and in the um, video where the tube dress I did that as under there which is basically the same way I did the that as on the bottom of the onion um, yeah so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video I will see you guys in another video have a lovely weekend bye bye <laughs> And then you know that. Say one double. Say one double. Trap, trap. What do you want to do?